become unnecessarily complex. Why? I'd like to unravel a few barriers and come up with some other things that we can focus on that would give us more direct and useful approach to thinking about it. How useful is an emotional discourse of tears and empty apologies when the conditions that fuel oppression still exist? My interest is in change so that we can lay the proper foundation for all of our children's future. Racism is not about race. Surprise! <laughs> not really. Science shows that race has no biological reality. If we must focus on difference, there's always culture, but progress has proven that indistinct. If race is meaningless, then racism is irrelevant. So what's left? The observable. What you're excluded if you have freckles or red shoes or you red strawberries. I don't like red. So, but what are we really talking about? We are really concerned with difference, or are we using difference to structure oppression? When we don't want to talk about racism, we're really saying we don't want to talk about oppression. For this reason, racism as a conversation never works because we are not ever talking about race. So what is oppression? What are the psychological motives behind personal, social, and institutional forces of, of oppression? This is the conversation worth having, not about racism. I'm just saying, just saying I'm not racist is a pointless as we're all perpetrators, contributors, and bystanders to even our own oppression. Yes. But if there is no race and characteristics and culture are based on assigned meanings, we're left with perception of the mind driven by self-awareness, our core. Does an unhappy, angry man rape a woman because he wants sex? No. It's not about sex, it's about power. Yes, you guys are good. But not a healthy sense of power, not the kind of power that is self-regulating and comes from a continuously flowing internal source like enjoying the sun, peace of mind, and sense of tranquility. I'm talking about power lacking truth, devoid of inner stability, the kind that requires the suffering and the diminished value of others. For example, we assign power to capitalism. However, capitalism is designed to only work on the back of cheap labor. False power is self-medication. Billions on advertising massage this false sense and make us believe that the accumulation of stuff equals power. Don't worry about who died making it. Just take a Xanax or go to Target because the big red circle will make you feel happy, right? So let's talk about <coughs> false power and how it equals oppression. Narcissism doesn't know itself to be narcissistic, right? But the pain of never enough makes the self-medication of oppression a great temporary <coughs> antidote. Like drugs and rape, where there's no inner source, oppressing someone based on characteristics like freckles provides a temporary feeling of power. For a moment, it creates a high, but it's never enough. So what happens when it's never enough? We get greedy. And that's where greed comes from. Fear of self unchecked turns into hatred of self unleashed. A projected fear or self-loathing has nothing to do with race, culture, or gender, or any differences beyond what the meaning is that the projector assigns them. We have to begin by being conscious, starting with how we are thinking about ourselves and how we are identifying ourselves. All right, hold tight. Saying I am black is not an identity based on race or observable characteristics. It's a shared experience of healing and reconnection expressed in music, art, food, dance, style, language. This is also true of Italian, Irish, French, Korean. But what do we say, what are we saying when we say I am white? What are we saying? White is an identity based on skin color, an observable characteristic. Why are we choosing to identify ourselves in this way? Why wouldn't we say Irish or French American or European American? Why don't we say I have, we don't ever say I have a taste for white food, or I want to go see some white art or a white movie. We don't say that. <laughs> so why do we say I'm white? Beyond color, what is our shared experience? What do we value? What are we thinking of ourselves and our relationships to the world? To the world, what does white imply? Oppression? Maybe. Privilege unearned? Definitely. We have to be conscious about who we are, how we identify and define ourselves, where we derive our power, what we do to our planet and our children's future, how long can our Earth sustain our need for false power? It's about balance. But balance isn't about hiding behind gated communities, sucking up our resources, and polluting the Earth with overconsumption while the rest of the world overworks in impoverished conditions to maintain it. That doesn't work. And the key to that gate can't unlock our gated minds. 
just as Oscar Pistorius. We have to find more socially effective ways to meet our basic psychological needs. As our weapons increase and our environment suffers, it takes self-honesty and cooperation, not conflict, to heal our world. Yes. And contribute to our collective well-being. What is my source of power? Am I dependent on the oppression of others to feel powerful? What am I saying to the world and myself about me? What am I giving my power to? Be conscious. Every moment, every decision, every thought is an opportunity for all of us to be amazing igniters. <laughs>